In this video, we're going to take you through an introduction to using assemblies in Build Exact. We're also going to talk a little bit about how they work and just some of the different use cases of them. And from there, we're going to discuss more options regarding assemblies. Now, to begin, we're going to start here in the estimate costings. And typically, how we like to introduce assemblies is to really use a simple each example, as this really helps us to understand the core components of how an assembly works. I should note uh, that there are some additional videos that go through other common assembly videos, and this is really just meant as an introduction. Now to begin, effectively what an assembly allows me to do is to group multiple items together derived from a single takeoff. So to start, we're gonna go ahead and give our uh, our assembly a name. I'm gonna type in door here. And now to build the assembly, I'm gonna hit this little deck of cards and you can see it says build assembly, and that'll then take me into the screen. From here, we can have the ability again to change and further edit our description. And at this page now, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our assembly unit of measurement, which in this case is just gonna be measuring each door. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus button here. And this is gonna allow me to start to begin and put in the item, the number of that items per door, in this case each, as well as some additional information. So let's go ahead and start to fill this in. And let's say, well, in a door, there's a door. And here we can go ahead and pull items from our uh, catalogs if needed. Next up, I'll stipulate that is going to be a material. There will be one door. And I'll go ahead and say each door is going to be a $89 each. I'm going to come back to these two fields here a little bit later on. Next up, we're going to go ahead and say that in a door, there's also going to be a jam. I'll say one of those at $75. Further on, I'm gonna add some hinges in. And obviously at each door, there's gonna be multiple hinges. In, case, in this case, I'll say that there's gonna be three hinges and I'll say that they're $5 each. Let's go ahead and add in some molding for the door. And in this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and say that there's going to be 33 lineal feet. And each lineal foot will be say $1.21. And I'll go ahead and air and add in some labor. Labor is a very interesting one. Not many people do this, but it is and can certainly be a great use of assemblies. And in this case, I'll say it's going to be say roughly 0.5 of an hour. And I'll stick with the FTE costs are roughly around $37 an hour. So from here, we really just continue to add in the items. And again, really highlighting that the core component of this is that what we're saying is that in each door, there is one door one jam, three hinges, 33 lineal feet of architrave, and from here, 0.5 of an hour jam. Sorry, 0.5 of an hour of labor. And so at this stage, once we've gone through and filled all that in, we can go ahead and do our takeoff now. And this is just the simple each takeoff. Uh, we do have a separate video that'll go through this in more detail, but effectively here, all they need to do is just simply click, and that will then begin to count every single door. Now, once we've completed the takeoff, we're going to go ahead and hit the accept and save. And that'll then stipulate, well, then based on we know that we have five doors and we know how much is in each door, Build Exact will then do the math for us to say, great, well, based on that, we need five doors and all five doors are going to be $490. And it's going to keep unpacking that all the way across here uh, as a part of our recipe. So again, a great way from a single takeoff to actually derive multiple items as a part of an assembly here. Now, a couple other points I want to make here is this actuals category. Now, this can sort of throw people off when they're first early on using Build Exact, but essentially what this allows you to do is that in a in an assembly here, we may be putting items in that perhaps from an, S, uh, an actual costings perspective don't really belong in the category that this recipe this assembly and therefore these items sit in. So I might want to go ahead and say, actually this item, I want to go ahead and re, um, uh, reallocate it to a different section. In fact, let me choose maybe something else here. I'm going to say hinges. And I might go ahead and say, well, actually for an actual costings perspective, which is basically just on the job management side, I might want to go ahead and put that into say finishing carpentry as an example, or what I can do and also I can make brand new categories by just simply typing in here. So it's really just giving you the ability to reassign items uh, to a different actual costings category visible in the job management side. 
From here, I also have the ability to mark my UM increment. So in this example, I might say, look, you know what? I'm not going to get them to do 0.5 of an hour. I'm just going to round that up to the nearest hour. So I can go ahead and put the one, and that'll then automatically adjust that number up. And with the um, minimum here, what can sometimes happen is that maybe these costs uh, don't represent sort of the minimum amount that you can actually in the real world purchase. So let's just say for hinges as an example, I can't buy any less than 20 at a time or 20 minimum. So I can go ahead and put a number in there. And if the the assembly quantity times the unit quantity is less than the UM uh, minimum, it will then automatically uh, round that number up. Uh, but let's just say I zeroed that out and I know the no actual true number is 15. If I said this is 10, then because the assembly quantity times the unit quantity is greater than 10, it will effectively ignore it from there on in. So really just giving you that ability to sort of reflect the real world circumstances in which how we buy uh, materials and those sorts of things. Now, once I'm done my assembly, what I could do is if I was just building a one-off assembly and I didn't need this for future purposes, I could go ahead and hit close and that would permanently keep it parked there where I could access it again by simply hitting the blue assembly button. Or if I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and save this assembly for future use. So I'd hit save as. Um, I could then uh, give it a description and I'll just say, I'll just give it a different name, interior door, the standard. Uh, from here, it's going to put in the unit of measurement automatically. We're going to pop it into my uh, my recipes or commonly known as also my assemblies. Um, I could also then put the category and a subcategory here if I want to, but I'll leave it there. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And that is then going to save that assembly away. So what that really means is that the next time that I need to pull that assembly into another estimate or potentially a template that I might be building, instead of building it from scratch, what I'm going to do is I'll start the same way, i.e. I'm going to hit the build assembly button. But now instead of building it out, I'm actually going to jump up to my browse assemblies button. And in here, we have a whole bunch of, of uh, sample assemblies that you can go ahead and use and pull in. Or if I want to access my own, I can hit my, my recipes, my assemblies, and I could then go ahead and find that item, give it a click, and then it would automatically pull it in there. And from here, I could edit it and change it if I needed to, and then resave it or just close it and leave it parked for this particular uh, estimate. And that's an introduction to assemblies. Mm -hmm.